Hello and welcome back. Previously, you walked through some of the essential steps of data analysis, from importing data to calculating basic summary statistics. But we skipped over one crucial step, and that is setting up a data analysis project folder. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use RStudio's projects functionality to improve the reproducibility of your workflow. So let's get started. So now let's talk a little bit about what a project is, small p, and what an RStudio project is, capital P. So like I mentioned, project setup really should be the first stage of your data analysis. And a project is basically a folder that contains all the files associated with your specific piece of analysis. This folder usually contains a number of uh, subfolders. Typically, you have the input data folder, you have a script folder, and you have a folder for your outputs. And the RStudio Projects functionality, capital P this time, makes working with these project folders significantly easier. So what we're going to do in this lesson is replicate some of the Ebola data analysis we had done previously, but in the context of an RStudio project. And you'll see some of the benefits of working in this way. So here is a simple pictorial representation of the project folder you're going to create. As you can see, you'll have three subfolders, a data subfolder, a script subfolder, and an outputs subfolder. And then you also have this .rproj file inside of the folder that identifies it as an RStudio project. We're going to put into the data subfolder our Ebola Sierra Leone CSV that we had used before, into the script folder, some script that's going to analyze this CSV, and then into the outputs folder, any outputs that we create with this script. So here's what the final thing will look like. We'll have this Ebola analysis script import data from the data folder, and then write any outputs such as plots into the outputs folder. Hopefully this seems intuitive to you. This is just the basic workflow of a typical data analysis project. So let's go ahead and actually implement this structure. Now the process of setting up a project differs depending on whether you are on RStudio Cloud or on a local computer. If you are on the cloud, you technically cannot do any analysis outside of projects. So RStudio Cloud forces you to put your analyses into projects, which means you have created a project before. But let's go ahead and create a new one anyways. We click on that button there at the top right for new project. We're going to name this project something like Ebola Analysis, or maybe Ebola Analysis Project if you like. I'll just keep it as Ebola Analysis. And now this project thing that we've created is just a folder on the virtual computer that RStudio Cloud owns. So if we go to our Files tab here and we click on Cloud, we can see that there is a folder called Project, and that is where your project lives. So let's click back into that. And now this empty project already has some files in it. It has this project.rproj file. That is what identifies this folder as an RStudio project. And it also has this .r history file, which stores some of your R history. But we don't care too much about that for now. And so what you'll be doing in this lesson is creating subfolders inside of this main project folder and organizing your data analysis into those subfolders. So now I'm going to show you how to set up an RStudio project on a local computer. Here I'm demonstrating this with a MacBook, but if you're on Windows, it should look more or less the same. So you open up the RStudio application, of course, and then you go to the File menu at the top left and click on a New Project. And then you click on a new directory here. New directory just means new folder. So should you put the project in a new folder or put it in an existing folder? Here we say new folder. Okay, so we create a project in a new folder and click on our uh, new project there at, at the top. All right, and we're going to give it a name. Let's call it Ebola underscore analysis. And it says create project as subdirectory of. This is just asking you where to put the project. Where should we put this project folder? For now, I'm leaving it there in my desktop, but put it wherever it's easy to find for you. And then we click on Create Project. So what exactly is this project that you have created? Well, if you go to the Files tab of our studio, you can see that we are now inside of a folder called Ebola Analysis 2. And that folder has this file in here, Ebola underscore analysis 2.rproj. So the project you have created is a folder. And the thing that marks that folder as an RStudio project is this .rproj file in there. You also have this .rproj.user file, 
which stores some uh, user-specific preferences. You may not see that because uh, your hidden files may not be shown. To show your hidden files, wait, let me zoom in a bit. To show your hidden files, you click on this button here in the Files tab, and then I click on Show Hidden Files. Uh, most of the time, you don't need to look at these hidden files, so I'm actually going to uncheck this. Now, another thing that also occurs to me is that for some of your computers, you may not actually see this .rproj extension. Some computers hide the extension of any documents that they recognize. So if you don't see .rproj, just look for that RStudio logo beside the file, and you know that it is an rproj file. Now, what's the usefulness of this rproj file? The most common way you interact with this file is actually just to open up your project. So now I'm going to close this uh, RStudio window. And then I'll go to my desktop folder, and I see this Ebola Analysis 2 uh, folder that I created. And inside of it, we have uh, this .rproj file. And I can open that, and that will open up my analysis. So it brings us back to our studio. And if we had created any uh, scripts or any folders inside of this project, we would be automatically returned to where we left off in that project. Hopefully that makes sense. The .rproj file indicates that your folder is an RStudio project, and you can click on it from your computer's finder or file explorer to open up your project. To make that super duper clear, let me just create a new script and call it a test script. Test script, and I'll put some comments in it, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll close the this, uh, this RStudio window again, and then I open up uh, Ebola Analysis 2.rproj one more time and it's going to open up my RStudio project to its previous state and show me the test script. So this is an easy way to get back to your analysis. Now the following steps should look the same whether you're working on RStudio Cloud or on a local computer. So we go to our Files tab. Let's expand that a bit so that we can see the actual menu options. Then you click on a new folder. We create a new folder, first one for data. So type in data, press OK. Data is where we're going to put our CSVs and our Excel files, any source data for our analysis. Then we create another folder and call it scripts. Okay? And scripts is where we'll put our RMD files, or rather our, our script files. Later we'll talk about RMD files. Okay? And then a final folder for outputs, so any uh, plots or other kind of outputs uh, which you will see soon. Now note that this is just one way of organizing your data analysis projects. There are other ways you might choose to do it. There are other uh, folder structures you might choose to use. Now the next thing we'll do is put in our data set into this data folder. This looks different if you are on a local computer or if you are on RStudio Cloud. So I'll show you first how to do it on RStudio Cloud. So on RStudio Cloud, what you're going to do is first um, open up your RStudio Cloud window. Then we're going to actually use this button here, Upload, to put the data set into a specific folder. What data set are we using? It's the data set you used last time, the Ebola Sierra Leone data. If you want to re-access it, it's at bit.ly slash Ebola data, Ebola hyphen data, okay? And you can download it there from Google Drive. Once you've downloaded it, you come back to your uh, RStudio Cloud, you open up the data folder there, and then you click on Upload, and then you click on a choose file and you locate the file in your downloads folder or wherever else you have it. So I've gone ahead and done that and I can click now on OK. And now I've uploaded that data set into uh, the data folder. Now if you're working on a local computer, let's see how to grab your data set and put it inside of this data folder. Our studio at the moment doesn't have the functionality to drag a data set and put it directly in a folder here to drag and drop, but hopefully they will add that one day. For now, you have to use your computer's finder or file explorer for this step. So what data set are we going to put in the data folder? It's the same Ebola data set we had used previously, but if you want to get it again, you just need to go to uh, bit.ly slash uh, Ebola hyphen data, okay? And that'll bring you to this uh, Google Drive uh, stored file, and you click to download it, and then once you've downloaded it, then you can transfer it into your data folder. So now I'm going to transfer that data set from my downloads folder into the data folder of um, the Ebola analysis project. So I just click on it here and I press Command C or Control C on a Windows to copy it. And I click into the data folder and just paste that uh, in there. Now, of course, if you're on Windows, the process will look a little bit different, but I trust that you can figure out how to move a file on your computer from one folder to another. I believe in you. Now the next thing we will do is create a script inside of the uh, scripts folder. So we're going to open that up and then click on a new blank file 
and click on R script. So this is an alternative way of creating an R script. Usually you would use the file menu at the top and clicked on new script from there. But using uh, this option within the files tab helps you specify exactly where you want that script to go. So here we're going to click on uh, R script and then give it a name. I might give it a name like a main underscore analysis. So now we have the basic setup for our data analysis. This process of creating these subfolders may seem a little bit painful, but it is worth it to keep your project structure coherent and make it easy to share with others, as we will see later. So now that our folder structure is set up, we're going to go ahead now and do some data analysis. We're going to replicate some of the things we did in the previous lesson on the Ebola data set. So uh, go to the following URL, tinyurl.com slash Ebola hyphen script, and that'll bring you to this uh, gist where you can just copy this code snippet. So this is some of the stuff we did in the previous lesson. It will also be available in the uh, lesson text or the lesson manuscript, which if you, if you are on our website, you should be able to see. So go ahead and copy that and then paste that into your uh, main analysis script here. So let me go ahead and do that. Paste that into my main analysis script. So let's go through uh, this script. The first thing you start with is uh, the header where you can put your name and your date. So change it from John sample name Do to your actual name. And then we have this line that loads packages. So it checks if the, the package Pacman is installed. If it's not installed, it installs it. And Pacman is a package manager that lets us both load and install any of those uh, packages there. So we run these lines. Okay. okay, then in the next section, we're going to actually load our data set. So I've already put a bit of a snippet here about what data set uh, uploading will look like, or data set loading rather. So we're using here uh, the read CSV function, which comes from the readr package. So if you type a uh, readr, readr uh, dot dot, uh, sorry, colon colon I mean, then you have here the read CSV function coming from a uh, readr, as you can see. Readr is one of the packages that comes loaded with the tidyverse. The tidyverse, remember, is a meta package, which uh, loads several other packages. In any case, we're using the read CSV function from readr, okay? And then we open up our quotes, and now here's where the magic happens. Here's where it becomes such a wonderful thing that we have set up a nice uh, RStudio project. Because we're working with an RStudio project, we can simply put our cursor into those quotes and press the tab key, and our studio will show us all of the files and folders that are inside of our project folder. Okay, all the files and subfolders inside our main project folder. So we can see the data subfolder and we can see some other things there. So let's click on data for now. Okay, and then we can press tab again and it would normally list the files that are inside of this subfolder. But in this case, there's only one file. So if we press tab, then it just fills in that file. Okay. And notice also that you can get to this file directly by just pressing tab uh, here again and then clicking on Ebola Sierra Leone CSV, which it tells you is in the data subfolder. So we can click on that directly and load in uh, that data set. So now if we run this line, then we're going to import the uh, Ebola Sierra Leone data set and we can look in our environment and see that indeed we have imported uh, that Ebola Sierra Leone data set. Now this very short file path, this short path to the uh, data file that we have used is what's called a uh, relative file path. And the term relative is used in contrast to the term absolute. So you have relative file paths and absolute file paths. What is an absolute file path? I'm gonna paste one here. So the absolute file path for this Ebola Sierra Leone CSV is actually on my computer, user slash Ken David N slash Dropbox slash Mac slash desktop slash blah, 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 all the way to Ebola Sierra Leone.csv. The relative path uh, defines this path relative to the home folder, the folder for the project. And the folder for our project is Ebola, Ebola Analysis 2. Okay, so it only starts from Ebola Analysis 2. So just to say that again, the uh, relative path defines the location of your file relative to the folder of your project. Okay, in this case, the folder of our project is Ebola Analysis 2. So the relative file path starts after that. Okay, data slash blah, 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 blah. And the reason we're able to use this relative file path successfully inside of this script is because we're working with an RStudio project. We could have imported the data set with this absolute path. So we could have written read underscore CSV and then that full path to the file on my computer. And then let's call that maybe Ebola 2. All right, we could have done that. And if we had done that, 
uh, you, would, you would successfully import the data set. Yeah, you can see bullet two there. But if we tried to send a script that just had this line here, this absolute path to someone else's computer, it won't run, obviously, because they don't have this exact same folder structure. With the relative file path, on the other hand, we can send this script, or rather not the script, but rather the whole f uh, project, the whole project folder, we can send that to someone, and this, um, this script will run because they have the same path. They have the same relative path because you set up the project folder that way. Hopefully that makes uh, some sense. Now let's talk a little bit about the here package. So the here package has this function which is called here. If I type here and then colon colon, we can see there's a function inside of the here package called here. Very nicely named packages and functions from these developers. In any case, what we should do with here is uh, wrap, use it to wrap around our um, path. So rather than put just read CSV like that and then the naked path, it is generally a good idea to wrap that in here. Why should we do this? I must confess that at the moment, for an R script, it's not really necessary. But for an R markdown file, which we'll show you later, it will be useful to use here. So for now, just try to use it, even though it's not actually necessary. If you forget, that's fine. We'll remind you when we get to the R markdown chapter. In any case, just to show you that that works, I'm going to remove the, the old Ebola Sierra Leona dataset from my environment and then re-import it with here, okay? And we can see that it still works out fine. So now that we've seen how to import data in the context of RStudio projects, let's see how to export data in the context of RStudio projects. So we have this section here called uh, cases by district, and we have this function table, which if you recall, creates a one-way or two-way tabulation of variables in your data set. I'm going to uh, run that function, and let's see what it gives us. It gives us this district tab thing. If I expand my console a little bit, we can see what the district tab is. It's basically a count of the number of cases in our Ebola Sierra Leone data set that uh, belong to or pertain to each district. So you can see all the districts there, the count, and the uh, percentage uh, proportions there. Oh, those aren't really percentages, those are just proportions. So that thing is mislabeled, as I think I've mentioned uh, before. In any case, this is the kind of thing that you might want to send to some other collaborators or communicate to the public. It's a nice nugget of data that you might want to output out and so in order to do that, what function might you use? You might use the write CSV function. So there's a function called write CSV, and that's going to write a CSV file. You can think of a CSV file as a kind of a simplified Excel file if you are not already familiar with CSVs. In any case, um, we're going to write a CSV, and let's take a quick look at the help file for uh, write CSV so we can know how to use this function. So we type question mark and then write CSV, we can see that the write CSV function lets us write a data frame to a delimited file. You don't need to know what a delimited file is. Basically, we're saving our data set, we're saving our data frame, okay? And if we scroll down a bit, we can see what the main arguments are. The main arguments are X, which is the data frame that you wanna save, and file, which is the uh, path to where you want to save it. And if we scroll down a bit more, then we can see some examples of how this is used. You have here write CSV, and then the data object that you wanna save, and then the name of the file, the path of the file that you want to save. So now let's go ahead and use this write CSV function. The first argument, like we said, is x. So x equals district tab, this tabulation that we want to save. And then uh, what is our file? What is our file path? So the file path is actually going to be the relative path of where we want to save the file. What does that mean? So we open up a pair of quotes, and then similar to when we were importing a data set, we can just press the tab key, so let me move that away, and press the tab key, and our studio will show us the folders in our project. So now I'm going to click on outputs here, because that's where I want to put this output file, and then I'm going to type what I actually want to name this file. So I might want to name it something like a district tabulation, district tabulation, okay? Uh, .csv, remember to put the extension there. Since we're saving it as a CSV file, you need to put the extension there, .csv. And now we can run that line. And how do we know that it has, it has worked? We need to go to our Files tab. So I open up the Files tab here. And we can see here inside of Outputs that we have the district tabulation um, file. And if you want to make sure that it's working, you can rerun this line and make sure that the uh, time modified or the date modified column there changes. So I'm going to give it a few seconds, and then I run this again. And notice that it's going to go from 642 here to 643, okay? So that means that the data set is updated. We can open up this CSV by clicking on it directly and then clicking on View File. 
and we can see it in this uh, uh, raw text format. Or if you're working on your local computer, you can open up that file by clicking on it from your uh, file finder or your file explorer. Let me show you what that looks like in my case. So I go to the Ebola Analysis 2 uh, folder, I open up the Outputs subfolder, and then I have here District Tabulation.csv. I can open that up, and if I zoom in a bit, you can see that this is that data frame that we had outputted uh, from our script. If you are working on RStudio Cloud, you will need to, of course, export that data set from RStudio Cloud before you can open it in Excel or some other similar software. So I, here I have my RStudio Cloud window, I'm in the Files tab. And then I go to Project, Outputs, and I can click on it, uh, or check, click on that checkbox, and then this uh, gear icon there, and then click on Export. And that'll let me download that file and allow me to work on it on my local computer. Now the beauty of this setup is that whenever the input data changes for some reason, maybe the people on the field send you updated data, then you can just rerun the exact same script and you'll get also an updated output. We can test this now by changing slightly um, the output of the district tab. We're going to arrange it in descending order of the number of cases. What I mean by that is we're going to wrap this district tab object in the arrange function. I haven't shown you the arrange function yet, but the arrange function does what it seems to suggest it does, which is arrange the uh, data frame or the table in terms of a specific variable. The variable we're going to use here is the n variable. Let me just show you what district tab looks like first. So I just run district tab. Re recall that this shows us the counts of cases by district. And it might be useful to arrange that in descending order of um, cases. So if I run arrange district tab n, it gives us the table in ascending order, but we want it in descending order. So we just put a negative n there, OK? And we can save that uh, as the object uh, district tab arranged. So I'm going to save that as district tab arranged, OK? And I'm going to save, I'm going to overwrite this district tabulation with this new object, district tab arranged. So I take this, I copy that, and I replace the, uh, the x argument there. OK? And so I'm going to run these lines. Let's run district tab arranged, and then the write CSV function. And now the district tabulation has been updated. We can open it and see now that it is uh, arranged in descending orders, first with Kailahu, then with Kenema, and so on and so forth. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned, but this only applies to people working on a local computer, is that if you want to um, open up the folder you're looking at in your Files tab in our studio, if you want to quickly open that up with your computer's file finder or file explorer, there's an RStudio option for that. You can click here on More, and then click on uh, Show Folder in New Window, and that will open up this folder in your computer's file finder or explorer. So let's go ahead and try that. And so what that did for me is open up the exact same folder I can see here in my file explorer. And that obviously will come in handy in certain cases. So now that you know how to export a data output, let's look at how to export a plot output. I switched over to RStudio Cloud because my regular local RStudio was being a bit uh, finicky. But here we have this section, Visualize Categorical Variables. And uh, if we run this, we will see that it gives us a plot which you should have seen before. And this is the frequency of the categorical levels across your data frame. Um, it shows you the counts of districts, the counts of sex, the counts of status, and so on and so forth. This is the kind of plot we might want to export for a paper or to send to a collaborator or for some other reason. To export this, this is actually a ggplot, this thing. Um, and so we can use the ggsave function to export it. Okay, So ggsave. And if we're not sure what the arguments for ggsave are, we can either consult the help file, or we can just press tab inside of ggsave, and it'll show us those arguments. So here we can see the first uh, argument is file name, which is the plot to save. Okay, And so we're going to save this one, the catic vars plot, which stands for categorical vars plot. And then the next argument is uh, the file name, that is the file path that we want to export to. In our case, it will again be the outputs folder. So let's uh, shrink this section a little bit so we can see more of our script. So it's again inside of the outputs folder, output. And what should we name this file? We could name it something like a categorical plot, categorical plot. Okay. And the extension you put after this is going to determine what type of uh, image you save. Are you going to save a PNG or a PDF or an SVG and so on? ggsave supports uh, many different formats. If you look at the help file for ggsave, you can see all the formats it supports. 
In our case, we're going to export a PNG file, which is just one type of image. So we run that line, and it gives us some outputs in the console. It says saving 1.51 by 1.82 inch image. Okay, and if we, if we look now into our files tab, all right, then we can see that that categorical plot has been saved. If we wanted to export a PDF instead, we could just uh, duplicate this line. Okay, or maybe in addition, we want to export a PDF. We duplicate that line and put PDF, and we run that. And now we have also a PDF. But if you actually open up those files, you might notice that they're a bit mangled because they don't have the right sizing. So if we open this one, for example, categorical plot PDF, we can see that the size is just not right. So we should look at the help function for ggsave to see how this sizing argument works. We could do question mark ggsave, or I will introduce you to a new shortcut, which is just a function f1. Function f1, when you put your cursor anywhere in the function, will pull up the help file for that function. So we can look at the help file here for um, ggsave, and we see that we have a width and a height argument. So we want to replace um, whatever the default was with our specific width and height. In my case, I'll just try to do a square plot. So let's go and do, um, instead of size units, which I was trying before, I'll do width equals um, 10 and height equals 10. And the default unit is inches. So let's see what that looks like when I run that one. So I reopen my categorical plot PDF, okay? And that is starting to look uh, much better. It's much more reasonably sized. Now we can repeat the same thing for this uh, numeric variable plot. So the numvars plot, let's uh, pull this up to the center of our screen. If we run this and we look at what the numvars plot looks like, it is the um, histograms of the two numeric columns in our data set. Our data set actually has just one main numeric column, which is age, but ID is being misinterpreted as a numeric column. We'll talk about how to avoid that later. So we can just copy this line and just replace the object, the catic vars plot here, with the nums, numvars plot. And instead of categorical plot PNG, we could call this numerical plot PNG, okay? And maybe we should also use the width and height argument so we can get a reasonably sized um, document. And so that's basically it. We have reproduced some parts of the analysis that we did on the Ebola dataset, but in the context of an RStudio project. And you have seen that this allows you to easily import datasets and export any outputs in an organized way. This setup will also make it very easy to share your data analysis with other people. So you can take this folder, this project folder that we have created, and uh, zip that up, or you don't even have to zip it, you can just share it directly in an email or with a service like Dropbox to someone else. And when they receive that folder, they just need to double click on the .rproj file, and that will bring up the RStudio project, and they'll be able to run all of the scripts that you have written. And because you've used those relative file paths, then everything will run just as though it were on your computer. So this is full-fledged reproducibility. However, for long-term collaboration, sending uh, folders back and forth or using a service like Dropbox might have some issues. So most developers and most data scientists will actually use a service called Git or a tool called Git and a service called GitHub and GitLab, which let you work with Git. But the topic of Git is a bit too advanced for this short course. If you really want to look into it, the resource I would recommend is uh, the book Intro to R, so search intro to R, uh, dot com, intro to R dot com. And here there is a chapter on Git. If you scroll through here, there is a nice chapter on a version control with Git and GitHub. And I think this is the best introduction for beginners that I've seen. So if you really uh, need Git for maybe your collaborative workflow at the moment, this is what I will recommend. We will eventually do a course on Git and GitHub but just not here right at the start. So congratulations, you now know how to set up and how to use our studio projects. Hopefully you see the value of organizing your analysis in this way. Projects give you a coherent structure for your data analyses, and they make it easy to revisit, to revise, and to share your work with others. They're going to be a foundation of much of your work as a data analyst going forward. But that's it for now. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. For more resources, visit our website where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes and lesson notes, and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.